Just a short word this morning. It's a challenge and also a lesson in evangelism. I think I'll do sometime this year a series on how to evangelise, how, how to witness. So we can take this as a foundation to that series. But there's also a warning here. What do you think the person who walks into a McDonald's in America with a machine gun and shoots up strangers? What do you think that person and the person who goes to school with a gun, we've read about these cases, goes to school with a gun and starts to shoot pupils. What do you think people like that and the backslider who reaches for another drug or reaches for another bottle of beer. We think these people, one claims to be a Christian who is backsliding, the other doesn't care for Christian things. What do you think they have in common? Well I believe that the thing they have in common, Derek talks upon it, but when he says about we are warned not to forget our first love, but even before we have that love for God, there's something foundational. That person that walks into a McDonald's with a machine gun, and that backslider, or that Christian, any of us this week, that deliberately sin. We may not be in a backslidden state, but we may enter into a position where we know what we are going to do is a sin. What have we got in that instant in common with that person with that machine gun? Tell you what it is. We have forgotten the fear of God. They have no fear of God before their eyes. Romans 3. And we, when we sin lightly, we are forgetting to fear Almighty God. And that's the lesson what I want to look at this morning. The fear of God. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The psalm we read earlier, Psalm 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do his commandments, his praise endures forever. Now I've spent quite a lot of time, a couple of years ago, looking at the book of Proverbs, looking at the book of Ecclesiastes. I've spent a lot of time looking at this subject. But I believe it's a subject that Christians need to be reminded of. We can get complacent, we can get over familiar with the things of God and forget who we are dealing with yes he is a God of mercy, love and compassion we are objects of that love and compassion and mercy we are called out of darkness into his family he loves us but at the end of the day he is almighty God and we are told that we have to fear him Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 as I read earlier, the writer tells us there, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. I love the book of Ecclesiastes because I love philosophy. And that book deals with every philosophy that comes from the mind and heart of man and nails it and finishes it and says it's all rubbish compared to this, to knowing God. It's all meaningless compared to knowing God. And in verse 13 of chapter 12, we read these words. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's see what it's all about. This is what it's about. Bottom line. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. Fear God. And it's tied up in Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Or some translate it the beginning of wisdom. Psalm 111 verse 10. All wisdom then. All true wisdom, all true knowledge, must have the fear of God at its foundation. If it hasn't got the fear of God at its base, then it's not true knowledge. So, if I were to take that then to the next step, all pagan, all heathen, all non-Christian, all worldly, whatever you want to call it, all knowledge that hasn't got God and the fear of God at its basis is folly it's useless, it's foolishness listen to this, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 to 18 
The Apostle Paul writes, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, Stop there. That's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, I'm not just writing this, I'm testifying this in the Lord. I'm testifying this as, as I am led to write it. I testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. And then he goes on to tell us how they walk. In the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. That sums up their entire knowledge and understanding. Of all knowledge that you can ever know, of anything you can ever know, we sing that hymn, don't we? The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. And that's true. The greatest thing, all wisdom, all knowledge, the greatest thing, the knowledge of God, has to be the highest. It has to be the principal thing. And only from a biblical perspective can we have a true understanding of reality. I've touched on this before. What is reality? It's what God says it is. And only from a biblical perspective can we have a true understanding of reality. We can never have a comprehensive view. Only God has a comprehensive view, a complete view. But we can have a true and correct understanding of reality as we know God and his word. But the foundation to that the foundation to knowledge is the fear of God. There is no true knowledge without the fear of God. And by that, I mean the fear of God in my attitude. The fear of God in my heart should encourage me to be godly. The fear of God should encourage me into all holiness. And with that attitude, then the things I learn and understand are underpinned by this fear of God. So that my mind will not be darkened. That my understanding will be clear. Because I'm walking and I understand things in the fear of God. But what is the fear of, of, of God? What is it to fear the Lord? Some have said it's that loving reverence by which a child humbly bends carefully to the will of their father it is that it incorporates that but it's more than that we should fear God as his children we feared our father humbly, lovingly and reverently but not all of us have had a loving fatherly relationship some of us have had terrible relationships with our father but even so we know in our hearts what the father and child relationship should be. It's one of respect and of mutual love. But also I believe that the scriptures go beyond that. Yes we have to have that reverent, humble fear of our father in heaven. But underneath all that is a holy, righteous, almighty God who hates sin. He is our Father, He loves us, but He is a God who hates sin. It wasn't a little thing for Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross. It wasn't a little thing for us to sin in order for us to sin and then for that sin to be redeemed for Jesus Christ to have to suffer. Don't forget that He would have to suffer for your smallest sin. So your smallest sin should be seen in the light of the price Almighty God paid for it and why did he pay that price why did Jesus Christ have to suffer in such a way because God is holy 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 he is an awesome almighty God who hates sin and we have to have the correct understanding of sin in order to fully understand what it meant for Christ to die in our place and we ought to fear fear to sin out of our fear of almighty God I tell you something if God were to open up to us, or were Christians, the true consequences of our sin. If he were to open our understanding to how much he hates sin. And how we can understand this is to enter into what Calvary is all about. We would indeed not only fear to sin, we'd be ashamed to sin. We'd not want to sin. We'd find a desire to sin in our hearts would get weaker. 
And that attitude, that attitude, that attitude should enter every sphere of our lives, into every exercise of our minds. It should be the object of all our desires. The fear of God should undermine and oversee everything we do. Proverbs 9.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Job 28.28 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Proverbs 15.33 The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honour is humility. So what's that got to do with evangelism then? What has the fear of the Lord got to do with evangelism? Well I believe this thread of humility. The fear of the Lord is to be humble before Almighty God. It's to see who and what we are dealing with. The sort of being God is. To contemplate his holiness, his righteousness. To see who we are in relation to this Almighty God. We are objects of his mercy. And humility... Being, being humble being teachable is the key I believe to evangelism not until we become humble not until we become teachable in other words acknowledging our own littleness acknowledging our own unworthiness distrusting our own thoughts distrusting how clever we think we are distrusting our thought processes and willing to have our minds completely turned upside down by God himself through his spirit. It's doing things God's way and not our way. I think many times Christians can become quite conceited in their knowledge of theology and the things of, of God. Let's listen to what R.C. Sproul wrote. A great teacher is teachable. If he is not, he will have precious little to teach flee from the teacher who knows it all unless that teacher is God we have to be teachable we have to never ever get to the stage where I know it all or even have an inkling of the attitude that's why I have to tell you don't believe what I tell you go home read your bibles check it for yourself I'm always trying to check myself could I have it wrong I had the wrong theology for many years pride we, we can become arrogant in our understanding pride comes before a fall pride comes before shame so then how does this tie up with the fear of God why is the fear of God the beginning of wisdom and knowledge because of who God is and who we are God is omnipotent he's all powerful He's omniscient, he knows all things. So he's all knowing and all powerful. He can do all that he wills. God knows everything. God, God can never learn anything. God's knowledge is comprehensive. And it's original. And it's creative. God is far, far greater than we can even imagine if we looked at the other week when we looked at prayer. There are no standards higher than God. God hasn't got, there the, isn't this objective standard that God has to adhere to. It's, it's that old question, what is good and who says it is? There isn't this standard called good and God tells us you must aim for this standard that I aim for. That doesn't exist. The highest standard there is, is God himself. He is the highest in all wisdom, all knowledge and all ethics. And we know that in Christ, the full Godhead dwells. So then, if God is a higher standard in all areas, then it must follow that his word has to be our highest authority and our highest standard. How are we to know the mind of God? How are we to enter into it? Yes, prayer is so important. But if we want to know how God works, how, God's, how God leads, we need to know his word. I think it's wonderful that Derek from a child has memorised many verses. My memory is awful as, as you found out this week. But we must spend time in the scriptures. Are you going to remember scriptures unless you read the scriptures? We must learn to receive God's word as God's word. And God's wisdom, containing his word, 
is imparted to us through that medium we enter into the wisdom of God and the attitude we have if we fear God if we respect him if we start to understand who we are dealing with we will have a reverence for his word and the wisdom will come through that attitude and through studying of his word and what will be the result you will enter into any conversation you could enter into a conversation with the most intelligent person in the world if that person is not a Christian you will have more wisdom than he will have Psalm 119 verses 99 I have more understanding than all of my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word I have not departed from your judgments for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my mouth through your precepts I get understanding therefore I hate every false way your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path Colossians 3.16 that the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and ad ad admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs 2 Timothy 3 and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete fully equipped for every good work why do we sin why do we sin so lightly because we don't fear God as we should why do we not fear God as we should because we don't spend time in his presence we don't spend time in his word this sermon is short sermon that I'm preaching this morning Jesus said that the word of God is like a seed and his hearts out there and even though we're all Christians here this morning that heart, that seed may fall in a little bit of your heart where there's rocks it may fall into an area of your heart where there's nettles to choke it out it may fall into an area of your heart where the devil will easily snatch it away because all those areas exist in our hearts we pray that the seed of the word of God always falls into good soil let's go a little bit deeper in closing if knowledge then true knowledge of God begins with the fear of God that's what we thought the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom so true knowledge begins with the fear of God then belief must come before that knowledge you must believe before you enter that knowledge that's quite deep true wisdom then true knowledge does not result in the fear of God but true wisdom and true knowledge comes from the fear of God it begins with the fear of God and the testimony of scripture is clear on that point we cannot come to a true understanding of God by our reason and by our intellect we cannot after gaining some intellectual proof of God's existence place our faith in such a God you can't do it we need to be presented with the God of the Bible we need to be presented with the truth of his word Matthew Henry said in order to attain in of all useful knowledge that is most necessary we should fear God we are not qualified to profit by the instructions that are given to us unless our minds are possessed by a holy reverence of God and every thought within us be brought into obedience so what's the implications then to our preaching what's the implications to our witnessing John 17 3 this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent the message of the gospel is knowing God and faith precedes knowledge Faith enables us to draw to God, draw close to God and to know him. And God demands that we have faith in Jesus Christ. So then, if we tie it all up in closing, it's evident 
that we cannot come to a true understanding of the revelation of God be it in creation or be it in scripture without faith we do not come to know God by exercising our darkened reasons we don't come to know God by exercising our darkened understanding we come to know God by the revelation of Jesus Christ that's how we know God and the basis of that is fear that's why the gospel is repent and believe the basis of repentance is fear I've spoken to many Christians I use that in inverted commas who are struggling with sin they're struggling with backsliding they say I keep confessing my sin but there's no repentance because they're confessing their sin out of remorse not out of fear of almighty God once we fear God once we truly repent we will enter into the deeper knowledge of him and that applies to all of us no matter what level of Christianity we are at there's areas of our life that we need to fear God in and that will drive us to repentance and then that will give us wisdom and knowledge in those areas I, I didn't think I'd have time to, to do all this I'm going to have to cut it short how does some so summarise it then when we're witnessing when we're evangelising we know from Romans 10 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God it's not our job to argue to come and to convert it's our job just to present the truth of the gospel it's like Ray Comfort said the truth of the gospel must contain that element which puts fear into people God is angry with sin God is so angry with sin that to redeem us from sin it cost him the life of his son what we have to do as Christians as a little congregation we have to I think rediscover the fear of God in our lives and in our attitude so what how are we going to do this spend time in prayer as we've said last week spend time in the word but we need to focus it my prayer for me this week I'm going to make, make an object of my prayer life is I want God to show me the depth of Calvary what it meant for Jesus Christ to die on Calvary's cross and I, I, I want to pray that I would enter into a deeper understanding of what sin is so that I fear to sin because of my fear of God and I, I, I pray that you take something away with you it's a short sermon this morning I don't want to have anything in common with those people that walk into McDonald's I want to have the fear of God in my life and I believe that as I fear God truly as I live a holy and righteous life others around me will see something of that you've only got to be a Christian for a short period of time and if you're if you've nailed your colours to the mask you will affect those you work with those you live with one time I worked on a coal mine and eventually those I worked with didn't swear around me they said it was out of respect but it's because they knew it was wrong even now these people will apologise for swearing when I'm there and I say it's not me that you should be apologising to it's not me you, you're answering to it's almighty God and I pray that through us people will come to fear almighty God and then the next step is wisdom and understanding Amen I close in him we have, we have a different service they are closing him if John Matt would like to come and play for us is him number one one uh, sorry one six six give me a sight we'll stand and sing in number one six six